Well, it's a new day today. We got moved up to the main farm last night, got the field opened up. So we're gonna cut some beans here. We got about a hundred acres up here around the house that we're gonna be able to work on today. I uh, got a beautiful forecast. Uh, it was about 30 mile an hour winds today and bright sun. So we're gonna be able to get this party started here pretty quick. Uh, first, we're gonna get the drill all set up. We're gonna get some wheat sowed today. Uh, Kevin's gonna run down and do that while the rest of us are cutting beans. So we're gonna get the drill out, get it set, get some seed in it, get it all ready to go. make a loop this is a bastard with this mower on the back It's time to save the environment. Put some def in. The condition of your planet is going to improve immediately. See why you don't want to get that def on anything important? It's real salty and corrosive. That's like crystals there. I'm gonna have to wash that off. See that? But boy, we are really saving the planet with this whole system. Look at all that plastic there. All this rubber, the plastic jugs that are ending up in the landfill because most guys don't buy it in bulk like this. They buy it in plastic jugs. Oh yeah. So these beans we're cutting now were sprayed with fungicide. We got 18 acres on the north side of the lane here that was sprayed with fungicide, 38 acres on the south side that was not sprayed, just as a comparison. And it's looking like the fungicide definitely paid for itself this year. Um, from what I'm seeing, we're, the field ain't quite done yet, but we're gonna be approximately 10 bushel an acre better on the sprayed versus the non-sprayed. Maybe a little more by the time it's all set and done. Um, 
in the past, we've always kind of dabbled with fungicide on beans for the last few years, but it was never anything that just really jumped right out at you to say, hey man, we need to be spraying this on all of our acres. You know, there was just a lot of variables and just one field that seemed like you'd have a yield bump, the next field you wouldn't, and just kind of back and forth. And so we just continue to kind of experiment with it. And it's definitely looking like this year was a year that it probably would have paid to spray all your acres, just from what I'm seeing thus far. Uh, we don't spray corn with fungicide anymore. We used to dabble in it a little bit, and it just seems like it's way too fickle. I mean, it seems like for us personally, more often than not, the fungicide did not work. So it just it just wasn't worth it. Now I'm not saying there's not instances where you could get a really bad year with disease and warrant it being sprayed with fungicide, but to just go out and just blindly spray all your corn acres with fungicide, I just I don't think that's the way to go. But on beans, it's starting to look more and more like it's one of the things that maybe a guy should be using. The verdict's still out a little bit. I'm not gonna just jump in 100% and say, yeah, you absolutely need to do it. But, um, it's definitely looking like this year it would have paid for itself big time. Today is a new day. We finished up this field last night on beans, and the only other beans we got left is 30 acres of replant, which they're, oh gosh, they're two weeks behind the rest of these, so they're not anywhere close to being ready. So I'm gonna go help a neighbor cut some beans today. Hopefully get all that done today, and then tomorrow we're gonna switch back over to corn and start hammering down on corn. So I'm gonna get the combine surface this morning, pull the filter, air filters out of it, get them cleaned up, fuel it up, Grease it up and be ready to rock and roll. This has been some of the dirtiest bean cutting I can remember in years. So I want to keep these filters clean. Well, now that the planet's saved, let's run back to the shop and clean these filters. Boy, 
I tell you what, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again today. I've just never cut beans in dirt like this. It's just terrible. I mean, you just can't see anything from as far as you can see, which there's other neighbors cutting here in the area, but this old dirt is just hanging. It don't matter which side of the field you start on, we've jumped all around trying to get out of it, but it's there's just not enough of a breeze, it's just hanging, so you can't really get out of it. We got done with the neighbor's beans yesterday, so now we're gonna switch back to corn, which I'm ready for that. I'm tired of cutting these dirty beans, ready for a change of pace. So me and old Henry, we're gonna run over and get an auger, gotta take it down to my house because where we end up tomorrow, we're gonna wanna fill the bin there at my house. So it's just as easy to get it down there now rather than after dark some evening once we get done for the day. So we're gonna hook onto an old auger, jerk it down to my house, then come back and get the combine all switched over and ready to start shucking a little corn. Well, we got rolling back in corn. Got old Henry helping me. He's out of school today, and then Monday's Columbus Day, so got all kinds of good help. He does pretty good. He's uh, 11 years old. He's been running the grain car since he's about eight, so he pretty well knows what he's doing. If it works out, I may try and surprise him tomorrow and let him run the combine. I'll just have to see how things work out and how we get along here. So yeah, he does pretty good. This morning started out kind of rough. We was on a pretty rough farm. I don't know, it's one of them you about pull your hair out when you're farming it anyway. And I caught a washout wrong and kinked three of these snouts real bad on the corn head. Luckily, I was able to get them popped back out with a C-clamp. Still hate doing that, but could have been a lot worse. And I'm still new to this YouTube gig. I didn't think to grab the camera when it happened, so I apologize for that. Maybe next time. <laughs> Hopefully there ain't no next time. Well, we got along picking corn yesterday pretty good. Uh, picked 55 acres or whatever it was. Uh, that was on some pretty ornery ground starting out. So we should have a pretty good day today. Gonna get on a nice 70 acre field. Uh, the only problem today is gonna be it's about 10 miles from home. So we might get back up on the hauling. We'll just have to see, but I don't know. First and foremost, went up to fuel up this morning and checked the fluid levels. Noticed the hydraulic oil was extremely low. Thought, uh-oh, got a leak somewhere. So started checking around on the machine and sure enough. This right in here was just all covered in chaff and you know how it does when you got an oil leak and something sticks to it. So I haven't located yet where it's coming from. So I just got it washed off. I'm gonna have to go maybe move the combine forward and backward, run the head, do the unloading auger. Just do quite a bit of things here and see what shows up. I'm just not sure yet, but just gotta see. I'm gonna pull up to the shop now and take the air hose and blow all that off because it's dripping with water right now and you can't tell what's water and what's hydraulic oil. We're gonna see how bad this leak is. Today's Saturday, so you know deer is gonna be closing at noon. Um, and we just, we haven't found the problem yet. I gotta find out what's going on. If it's one of them deals, if it's just a teeny tiny leak, you know, that's gonna take all day to lose a gallon of oil, we'll probably go ahead and run it and maybe call deer and schedule something for first thing Monday morning. But we just gotta see here. Now, if it's a bad leak and it's really puking it out, then we're gonna have to go to plan B, I guess. So let's tear into this and check it out. So yeah, don't get me wrong, any oil leak is not good, but you know, if I would have had to dump three gallon in that to get it up to the ad mark, 
I'd have been pretty concerned, but one gallon there put it well up over the ad mark. And since it's not spewing out anywhere that we can see, then that makes me feel a lot better that it's not just puking it out somewhere. And I'm pretty confident we can at least go ahead and run it today and then see if we can find out, pinpoint exactly where the leak is and then get it fixed Monday. Uh, the other guys, they're running around right now, moving trucks and grain carts and kind of getting everything set up and ready to roll. I need another set of eyes here though so I can get up in the combine and try different functions and see if that shows up because I don't know what all that valve block does there. Um, you know, it could be when you swing the unloading auger. Maybe that's when it leaks. Maybe it's when you kick the four-wheel drive in. You know, I have no idea what all that stuff does. So I need another set of eyes so I can work some functions and then see if it shows up. So we was able to get our hydraulic leak fixed. Thank God it only turned out to be an O-ring on that big valve, hydraulic valve block down there. It's got a bunch of valves plugged into it. And one of them valves just had a bad O-ring on it. So we was able to get that fixed and we're up and running now. So about an hour delay by the time we figured it out and got the O-ring and got the mess all cleaned up. So thankfully we are up and running. Best way to keep kids entertained in a combine cab, give them a dry erase marker and turn them loose on the window. Get your windows clean and it keeps them entertained. What are you drawing over there, Joe? Mm -hmm. What are you drawing? Over here. Oh, okay. I get her wiped off. Just to wipe it off. Then for the older kids, you just get them a pen and a notepad. And then for the really older kids, you put them in a grain cart. enough for one day. Wait. So we're gonna let Cora run it. How old are you? Eight. Eight? She's been in here drawing on the windows. Check this out. Got my windows all decorated. As soon as she got in the driver's seat, Henry hollered on the radio and said, hey, I wanted to drive. So he's eyeballing us. So, we get everything winding down here for the evening, just start filling everything, I may let him run her. So yeah, I think every kid should learn how to run stuff. What do you think, sis, you like this? Um, I'm really concentrated right now, so We're good. Maybe. She's been to the pumpkin patch today, got a cat drawn on her cheek. Whoa, wrong. here, we'll get over just a little. There you go. Keep her straight. A little straighter. A little straighter. Okay. Well, with her at the combine, Henry in the grain cart, I think I can take the rest of the season off. You think you got it, sis? No. No? I don't know. Looks to me like you guys are doing pretty good. It's like you're concentrating awful hard. I know. I know. You want me to get out up here? No. Say, I can get out if you want. Well, old Cora's still going to town on this rig. I'm gonna have to stop here pretty quick or old Henry's gonna be pissed if she got the drive and he didn't, so. Gonna have to do the old switcheroo here for a while, I think. You done driving? No. No? Doing pretty decent. Well, we done the old switcheroo. We got Henry at the helm now. Oh, you're getting off the road. Get her straightened out. John 
Deer 55 combine with a three row head on it. It was a real jewel. And then we went to a 4400 gas. It was quite the peach. And then to a 6600 diesel. And it was wore out. I mean, it wasn't a horrendous combine, but it had its fair share of problems. So yeah, when I was a kid, I always had to ride outside on the ladder in the dust and the dirt. Which didn't really matter because none of them had air conditioning, so you had to run with the door open anyway. So it didn't matter if you sat in the cab or sat outside, you were still eating all the dirt. The cab was almost worse because it was like a greenhouse, sitting there with all that glass, none of the windows open, so you bake away in there. So yeah, I've ate my fair share of dirt on combines. Well, we're gonna turn old Henry loose by himself now. Man, what I wouldn't have gave to had a rig like that when I was 11 years old. We'll see how he does. He's run it some, he's never ran it by himself, but it's high time he learns, so let's see what happens. I'm sure he's nervous as hell running it. And of course, when old dad's looking over your shoulder, I'm sure he's real nervous. But hell, with me sitting in there, it was probably even worse. Of course, I was, I wasn't really riding him, but I mean, every little mistake he was making, I was letting him know, so. He'll do all right. If I didn't think he would, I wouldn't have let him run it. Henry this I've turned him into one hell of a grain cart operator he uh, back when he first started running it it was kind of playtime you know he kind of fart around and I mean he took it serious but he wasn't in fast pace mode you grain cart drivers know what I'm talking about and so finally one day I just hollered at him on the radio and I said here's the deal pal when this combine gets full if you ain't underneath my auger I'm turning the son of a bitch on anyway, and you'll just scoop her up from one end of the field to the other with a scoop shovel. He's never missed a lick since then, so. Yeah, he's doing damn good now. I mean, loading trucks, he does her all. I mean, his, this is his rig, and I don't have to tell him nothing. He does a damn good job. Boy, the old grain cart. This is one rig I don't run much at all. I'm not gonna unload him on the go I don't think I don't think we've quite stepped up to that level yet but he'll be there pretty quick I'll bet now let's drive down here we'll drive alongside him see if we can't make him nervous See that black rod down here on the auger? Right there. That's how you control the flow of the grain here. On, it's hydraulic. So see I can open that farther and it'll spit it out faster. Or I can close it down and make it go slower. These carts like this, these bastards will spit grain out in a big hurry. Of course then I can speed the tractor up and slow it down too. That helps too. So you can kind of regulate it two different ways really. I generally tend to run the tractor a little slower and do most of my uh, loading or regulating, I guess you'd call with the gate. Then that spout up there too, it's hydraulic. I can kick it in and out, see how that grain moves? So you've got some leeway there too if you don't hit the truck just right. The tricky part gets when you get down to the end because you wanna <coughs> get your slide closed and you want to get your auger cleaned out but you don't want to run the truck over either and I'm probably fixing to show you how to run a truck over here in just a second so like now I basically got one pile left so you better get your slide shut down that'll give your auger time to clean out you can always open her back up just a hair if you need to so like right here I'm just barely gonna open it for about five seconds shut her back down and that'll spit a nice little pile on her right there. Just like so. Works pretty slick. And that 
that truck is loaded. Today is Monday, Columbus Day. Got old Henry helping. He's up there in the grain cart. Still rolling right along pretty good. Uh, 70 acres in this field. And it's all but done. We got about two or three acres left. Then we're going to move up the road about a mile. And got 50 acres up there. Sure looking like she could cut loose and rain about any minute. There's a slight chance of rain today. Nothing major. We'd be lucky to get a tent the way it sounds. So it don't sound like it'll shut us down even if it does come a shower. But I tell you, we are awful dry around here. We could sure use a rain. But it'll be what it'll be. Corn's still hanging right in there. It's running 16 to 17 on moisture and right at 200 bushels an acre. On the averages, so real happy with that. Well, we got old Henry at the helm again. That's better than school any day of the week, I'll guarantee you. cut this video off right here. I sure appreciate everybody tuning in this week and watching. Uh, I've been a little slow on these videos. We're right in the thick of harvest, so I ain't had time to edit videos and all that good stuff of an evening. So I'm going to try to keep pumping them out as quick as I can. We got probably roughly 300 acres of corn left. I haven't tallied it up, but it's somewhat close to that. And 30 acres of beans. We had some beans we had to replant last spring, and they weren't ready when the rest of them were. So yeah, we'll be working on that next week. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you next week.